Now that we have explored nutritional, physical activity, and behavioral interventions for obesity, as well as pharmacotherapy uh, management of obesity, the last thing that I want to cover is how bariatric surgery works. <laughs> and then we'll also look at some of the things to keep in mind about bariatric surgery, including the kind of diets that someone has to go on and some of the, the things that remain after, after the fact, which we'll do in the next module. Okay, but first I wanted to look at the different kinds of bariatric procedures. There are four main ones, and bariatric surgery is not novel. It's been around for quite some time, uh, but its use has gone up significantly in uh, the past 20 years. Okay, so we're going to look at all four of these, Ruan Y, which is um, probably the most popular, that in sleeve actually sleeve gets used quite a bit too so sleeve gastrectomy then there's the lap band and the bilio pancreatic diversion with duodenal switch which is quite the mouthful these three sorry a little messy here but these three are non-reversible okay whereas the lap band one of its main advantages is that it's something that is reversible for people that that want that option Okay, so we'll start with Ruan Y, and in Ruan Y uh, gastric bypass, what we do is we take the cardia of the stomach, and if you remember from your anatomy, the cardia is that big, the, the upper superior part of the stomach that is um, basically attached to the, the esophagus via the cardiac sphincter. Okay, so we take that cardia and we take a portion of the small intestine, the distal small intestine, uh, not the duodenum, and attach that to the, um, the cardia of the stomach. So none of this stomach is used for digestion. Okay, that said, the stomach stays there and there are digestive secretions. So you can't see this here, but your pancreas is here-ish. <laughs> My terrible drawing of the pancreas. And um, emptying into your duodenum is pancreatic secretions. And again, you can't see it here either, but also we have biliary secretions that are also uh, entering the duodenum too. So we don't, we wanna make sure that those secretions, bile, pancreatic lipase, pancreatic amylase, all of those things are still able to digest material that we've eaten, okay? So we keep that portion of the duodenum and the jejunum as well, but we just use those to deliver digestive secretions uh, to that lower part of the, of the small intestine that is receive, receiving food, okay? So one of the reasons weight loss occurs with this is that your stomach is physically smaller, is like its size is physically smaller, you get fuller more quickly. Plus, there's fewer nutrients you can absorb as well, uh, given that, again, we're not using this larger part of the stomach and we're not using a lot of the proximal small intestine to digest food too, okay? So you can look up this video on Ruan Y, and I'll just show a part of this video that shows, again, how the cardia, I can't use my pen here, how the cardia is the only part of the stomach that is being used. I have that lower portion of the small intestine that's attached to the cardia. The rest of the stomach stays intact, and it's going to be able to deliver those um, pancreatic and uh, biliary secretions down to that distal small intestine, which is, I think, what it's going to show. Yeah, we see the attachment here. So what's this really good is that it shows the pathway of food in blue, as well as the path of those uh, bile and pancreatic fluids in yellow, meeting up in that distal um, small intestine, okay? So that is the Ruan Y procedure. There are some potential complications. Unsurprisingly, every time we open up the body in any way, even in this kind of laparoscopic way, which is how it's typically done, um, there are potentials for infection, for one thing. Uh, abdominal abscesses can occur, abdominal pain, uh, gallstones. Um, can often occur as well unless bile supplements are taken. It can lead to intestinal hernia. You know, you can look through this as well to see the other complications. And something else that's quite common in um, certain types of bariatric surgery, something called dumping syndrome, basically where someone has to run to the washroom really quickly um, because of kind of an urgency due to, you know, diarrhea or rapid bowel evacuation, which is a not so uh, comfortable complication. 
Okay. The second form of bariatric surgery that we're going to look at is something called sleeve gastrectomy. And basically, unlike Ruan Y, with the sleeve, we remove part of the stomach. Okay. With Ruan Y, the stomach stays. Okay. But with sleeve, we leave, they like to say, a banana sized portion of the stomach is left over. Okay. And we go in and we remove a significant portion, more than half of the stomach, okay? And we use these kind of scissors, <laughs> these surgery scissors that both cut and staple the stomach at the same time. So if you've heard of getting your sta stomach stapled, it's often referring to that, okay? Now I should warn you, if you are not a surgery kind of person or you enjoy anatomy like I do, this might not make you a little bit uncomfortable, but given the fact that you have already taken anatomy, uh, this might be kind of fun for you, <laughs> like it is for me. But I just wanted to kind of show you how this surgery goes down. And it starts by making an incision around the um, um, the navel. And we insert these these trocars. Let me just rewind that there. We, we insert these medical devices, you're going to see it a bit better right there, these trocars, which allow us both to insert basically a camera as well as our surgical tools. And usually there's like a number of these incision spots that allows the surgeon to use these <laughs> tools with the camera in order to do these surgeries. And what's great about this type of um, of surgery is I don't have to open up the entire abdominal cavity in order to do it. Okay. So this kind of just shows we're going through as our muscle layer too. I love this stuff. Okay. But I wanted to show this person a little bit more. Here we see the liver. And one of the things we're going to learn about bariatric surgery is that often um, the, the pre-bariatric diet is really focused on reducing the amount of glycogen around the liver and the size of the liver as well. Because you'll see right here, he's using a medical device to move the liver out of place. And we want to make sure that that liver is, is movable. <laughs> okay, you'll see the stomach uh, just inferior to the liver there with some of the omentum uh, below it. Okay, that, that fascia connective tissue um, deposit. So they're going to have to remove the, um, that omentum from the stomach in order to be able to do the surgery on it. You can just kind of see his tools there. But I wanted to fast forward to yeah so here you see this medical uh, device that's both cutting and stapling the stomach at the same time and what he's holding with these like these other devices I don't know the names of them okay is where he's about to clamp down on that's that other part of the stomach that's being removed Okay, so they go in and go all the way through to cut off that part of the stomach. And what they'll then do is they'll, once that part of the stomach is removed, they actually take it, typically take it out through one of those trocar incision points. Okay, then what they typically do is they flood the area with water and submerge the stomach under the water to look for any leakage that might occur. Okay, and they'll even pump air into the stomach as well to look for any leakage that may occur. Okay, but just to give you more of a medical, anatomical, surgical view of what um, sleeve gastrectomy looks like. So potential complications, uh, leaking of sleeve, and again, that's why we do some of those tests to make sure there isn't low leaking wound infections whenever we open up the body in any way, there's a chance for an infection. Um, food aversions is something that comes up not just with sleeve, but with other forms of bariatric surgery as well where like appetite changes and that is one of the ways that these techniques curb obesity but it we just never know like what's going to change about a person's like liking of food of like so certain foods they might like more afterwards and certain foods they might like less okay so as we can see in this uh, Swiss multi-center uh, study that compared um, the sleeve Okay, and Ruan Y, there's about similar drops in BMI with both of those. And actually something I wanted to show you here is just like we saw with pharmacotherapy, there's usually this big drop in the first stint and then that larger weight loss plateaus and we usually see a slight regain, okay, with these surgeries.
Okay. Both surgery, both Ruan Y and both uh, gastric sleeve have impressive <laughs> effects on a number of physical and mental parameters. Okay. So the color, the faded bars, these show the number of improved. Okay, whereas the colored in bars shows what they categorized as people being cured from that particular thing. Okay, um, although you could argue that you can't cure type 2 diabetes, but nevertheless. <laughs> so we do see a lot of improvement in dyslipidemia, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, and things like depression as well. Okay, so... Um, Often we think of these surgeries and we just think of the effects on weight, but the associated medical benefits of these procedures are overwhelmingly impressive. And that's why when people are considering these types of surgeries, it's not something light to consider. And there are several things that, you know, your life's going to change in various ways, typically after these types of surgery. But um, my friend's dad had this done, had I think the sleeve done, and I asked her, about it um, a, a few months after the surgery and I was like how how's your dad doing and she was like you know he just has his life back and that like oh, struck me to my core like often you know we look at these things and some people think that it's an easy way out to go through some of these types of surgeries and we're gonna see that it's not an easy way out but like I know a lot of people think that lifestyle intervention is the only kind of way to approach this but some people even if they do fix change their lifestyle it's only going to get them so far and these really kind of up the chances that someone's going to have a better quality of life after the fact so it's not something to be taken like another potential bariatric uh, procedure is the lap band which is a reversible um, procedure okay so again we use the cardia and in this case we place this adjustable band around the cardia and it can be adjusted as far as the diameter of the band goes um, in this procedure the path of food is not compromised the size of the stomach like the actual size of the stomach is not compromised but the inlet part of the stomach is and one of the main ways that it promotes satiety is through quicker release of some appetite suppressing uh, hormones plus there's just less room for you to eat Okay, so one of the ways this, this changes an individual with obesity is that their appetite usually goes down and they just physically can't eat more. Okay, So there are a bunch of, of potential c complications, regurgitation of food, infection, always less, liver laceration can happen with the procedure as well and that's why we have to be really careful about the liver. The band can erode. Some people are intolerant to the effects of the band as well so there are potential complications but again because this procedure is done quite commonly there's usually techniques to reduce the risk of these things these things happening okay does it promote weight loss yes of course it does when we look at the uh, lap band in green versus the ruan y procedure in black we notice that weight loss is more uh, significant in the um in the the ruan y procedure so there's usually less weight loss with the lap band okay um yeah so but it is safer there's tends to be fewer complications and something else we want to look at, and this is something we'll talk about a little bit more in the next module, is that how successful the surgery ends up being really depends on the care the patient takes afterwards as well, and whether their lifestyle does change. So this study looked at the post-operative behaviors um, of different patients and how that predicted weight loss. So really, I'm just going to draw your attention to this part of this study and it looks at like pattern one versus pattern two versus pattern three okay and basically pattern three are people that self-weigh that stopped eating when full stopped eating con uh, and, and stopped eating uh, continuously and if we compare pattern three to pattern one where people never self-weighed always kept eating with full and always ate continuously we see greater amounts of weight reduction when an individual also had kind of these more, let's say, positive behaviors after the fact, after the surgery, 
okay so that again speaks to the fact that any of these procedures of the gastric by bypass procedures or even you the use of pharmacotherapy they're not meant to exist in a vacuum and they're ideally meant to be adjunct therapy associated with lifestyle changes as well and the great thing about both pharmacotherapy and bariatric surgery is that they can help with lifestyle uh, management right they can help with appetite for instance okay the last type of procedure that we'll look at for um uh, bariatric surgery is the the mouthful one biliopancreatic diversion with duodenal switch they need a better name <laughs> it's sometimes just called bpdds but even still that's hard to say okay so the big this is kind of like a combination of ruan y and sleeve it's a little more than that but that's kind of the easiest way to put it so you'll notice for starters we do do a sleeve Okay, so we have a smaller stomach here. Okay, so sleeve gastrectomy, we do that first. Uh, the pylorus remains, the cardia remains uh, intact as well. And then what we do is we take the ileum, the, the distal part of the small intestine, and we reroute that ileum to attach basically to the, the pylorus or just distal to the pylorus, okay? We keep the duodenum and the jejunum intact and we leave them there. The only thing that's removed is that sleeve part. We keep that duodenum and the jejunum, but mainly they're kept just like we saw in Ruan Y to allow those pancreatic and, and biliary secretions to eventually reach that digesting food. If I clear my annotations, again, I'll show you the root of food. The food is going to come <laughs> this way, but until here, it hasn't encountered any um, of those pancreatic juices or biliary juices. Okay, so it can't fully digest it. Our small intestine also has its own secretions. Okay, so the microvilli, the, the, small, the small intestine also secretes certain enzymes that help with digestion, but the big ones are going to be produced and secreted by the liver or the pancreas, okay? But those secretions are not going to meet up, I should have changed the color of my pen, but they're not going to meet up with that digesting food till lower down in the ileum, okay? So first of all, we can accept less food because the stomach is smaller because we did a sleeve, but also nutrient digestion and accordingly absorption is compromised because we do it so much further down, okay? So basically it works because the amount of nutrients and thus calories that a person takes in is compromised. But of course, as that, that also implies that nutrient deficiencies are, are a risk here. Okay, so three-pronged approach, we talked about this. The sleeve, sleeve gastrectomy promotes satiety. We uh, reroute the food because when we reroute that food, it doesn't have as much time in the small intestine and less time for digestion to occur. And a lot of that digestion is occurring way distally down in the small intestine where bile and pancreatic juices meet up with those, with that digesting food. Okay, similar kind of complications. Death is rare, but it has occurred in this one. Um, this one's less common in Canada. I think there's only, I think they do it in Quebec. And I know they were thinking of doing it in BC, but I actually don't know how common it is. Mostly in, in Canada, we see sleeve and Ruan Y and, um, and lap band 